Yo, what's up guys? Uh, today we're going to kind of look at some cards that right now are kind of sleeper cards. They're not going to really do much right now in the game, but they have so much potential. Like right now, they're pretty much useless, or not necessarily useless, but too niche to be used in a lot of decks. So they're not going to see much play, they're not going to see much value, but they have so, so much potential. Like, just to kind of get into it right away to look at what we're talking about. Like, something like Circle of Sky. For a one cost invoke rune, you can access two spirits if you do draw a card. It's unfortunately not a good card because nexusing is kind of a cost in itself. So in order to nexus something, you need to have a target and something to receive it. So you need to have multiple cards in play. Usually we refer to cards like, you know, divine runes and sometimes stadiums or your artifacts as like your banks. And then you'll have something like your elestrals to receive them as your targets. So you kind of need two cards in play and Circle of Sky in your hands, so it's kind of a three-card setup. But what you can do with that is if you have receive effects, like Astrabbit, Toxian, Cinder, Pegas, Clovey, you can kind of get more value out of it and turn your Nexus, which is almost a cost, into something beneficial. And potentially you get to some three drops faster with it. But right now it doesn't see a ton of play because it's a lot of setup for not a lot of payoffs. Like, again, we could potentially use it to get Astrabit to trigger again, so we can draw another card with Astrabit, replacing another card from top three cards in our hand, and we draw a card, so it's like a draw two. That's pretty good, but Clovey, okay, if we next this to Clovey, it's like drawing two with three cards in play. It's a little bit of setup when we just draw two with uh, Nectar of Gods instead. Uh, we can circle this guy to Cinder. Now that's reasonable. We don't have a ton of milk cards. Maybe Cinder is an option. Maybe if we get some more synergy with some milk cards, you know, we'll talk about Humbust in a bit, but Humbust and Cinder, and we circle the sky, something to Cinder. Now we mill three from Cinder and two from Humbust. That's a lot. So there's potential there, but if your deck is built around that, it's too inconsistent right now with the one circle of the sky and the one Nexus target. And Pegas, you can destroy runes by Nexusing, but again, you need to have more cards in play to do that. It's a lot to ask. So circle of the sky sees basically zero play, in more competitive kind of formats and games that we've been playing. So Circle Sky, it's kind of relegated to the trade binder, the, the, the fodder. You know, it's going to be your bulk rares for a bit. But in the future, example, let's say we have a really powerful 3-drop that is whenever it receives uh, a spirit, destroy a card your opponent controls, or whenever it receives a spirit... You know, draw two and your opponent has to discard a card. There's If there's a powerful receive effect on a three drop, which our three drops can have really powerful receive effects because it's going to force us to have to combo to get those continually. And if that's its only thing, it's just, oh, when it receives stuff, receiving is very slow, usually. We can abuse that with Circle of the Sky. If we get some good two drops with receive effects, we can abuse it with Circle of the Sky. If we get more critical mass of receive cards and cards that we want to have or more banks cards that benefit from having lots of spirits on board because the game wants us to have spirits on board because we can reuse spirits on board if we have spirits on zeus we can use spirits on zeus to cast in our circle of sky and then use the other spirit to nexus so the game likes us having spirits on board and nexus is a mechanic that allows us to move them around and really kind of take advantage of what we have on board so when we get to the future and we get way more sets on the line and we get some good banks we get some really good receive effects circle of sky is going to be a really good enabler to reuse really powerful effects that require receiving so circle of sky's card hold on to it and it might see a lot of play in the future it might see a lot of use i think it's a really strong card just not right now right now it's kind of weak uh so kind of continuing with my thoughts uh we'll jump into humbus humbus another card right now uh, people were freaking out when it had no uh, effect cap to how many times it could trigger. It wasn't going to break anything with an unlimited cap right now, but in the future it might have, so they even kind of gave it a hard stop. But even with its stop at four times a turn on the trigger, it can still mill a lot. So Humbust in the future, it's going to be a good card in a mill deck, and to be more specific, a slower kind of mid rangey controlly mill deck where you can kind of sit Humbus, protect it with, you know, right now people can play Humbus, protect it with Tsunamis, Altars, stuff like that. You know, have your uh, Cinders in play as well. Again, I mentioned just prior, you could circle your 
Cinder and Humbus and play. Did I talk about that? I don't know if I'm moving my notes or video. I'm not looking back. Anywho, there's some good ideas with Humbus that right now it's just too slow, doesn't quite work. But in the future, if we get more, just even more just mill support in general, Humbus is a great thing because if you play Humbus and your opponent wants to use runes, they have to deal with Humbus first, especially if in your mill deck. Otherwise, they're going to just lose a lot of cards in the deck really fast. So I think Humbus has potential in the future to be a really powerful mill enabler. Uh, now moving on to our next cards, not that. We have Jolton and Elichik. So I put these two cards together. Uh, Elichik's already seeing a lot of play in Voltempest style decks. But the things that these cards have in common is that they kind of have a un just kind of walled off search effect for their rune. So they can just search for any rune of any element of that specific type. So Elchuk gives you any divine rune. So if we get more powerful divine runes or more divine runes needed in combo pieces, etc. Elchuk's going to see a lot of play there because he'll just go get you the divine runes that you need, help you kind of work towards your combo or whatnot. And Jolton can look for any stadium. Now right now our stadiums are they're basic, you know, they just get you some damage, get you some defense. That's about it. But in the future, if we get stadiums for archetypes or stadiums that have really unique effects or stadiums that want us to fill up stuff in our board, if we have combos that we need stadiums for, Jolton's just going to go find it for us. So just these are in Magic Gathering called Tutors, other card games, you know, they're searchers. They're going to search us for specific cards. We don't have searchers for Invoke Runes at all. And our searchers for Elestrals are limited to specific spirit elements. You know, Rummagem only finds its Earth. Smolduga only finds us Fire. So they're limited, but these guys are just say, hey, you want a card of this card type? Go find it. In the future, if we get a Bear Den card for our Ursas, you know, we're already looking at some Ice Bears that we've seen small spoilers for. Jolton might be a good st support card in Thunder to throw in there just to, hey, Jolton, go find my Bear Den card or whatnot. They'll be really useful support cards for finding specific cards for your specific strategy. But right now, besides Elichek seeing some play in Voltempest, Jolton doesn't see much play because no one's really playing these stadiums. But when we get good stadiums, Jolton's going to be a really good card for that. Moving on, we have another card that I think a lot of people... There's two camps of Thunderstorm. A lot of people say Thunderstorm is great. I'm using it a bunch. And a lot of people just say Thunderstorm is unplayable. I'll just play P-Gust or I'll play Tornado because it's cheaper. And I'm in the camp of I think Thunderstorm right now is really strong. But because a lot of people are just sitting on it, I want to talk about it briefly because I believe as we get more cards, the format becomes a little bit faster because we have more options to deck or more concise and built around. We have more strategies. Thunderstorm is going to be great because we don't lose our normal cast per turn by playing it, unlike P-Gust. And sometimes you P-Gust and Ambrosia and you go, well, that was a waste of my summon. And then they just crack back your P-Gust and you basically gained almost nothing. Thunderstorm says, hey, I'm going to destroy that back row card in a very specific time that I need it. I can hold it in my hand until I want to use it. Blow up maybe a poison dip arrow. Go for my combo because I opened up the board and I didn't lose my summon for turn. So I think Thunderstorm, a lot of people are sleeping on it. I think it's got potential to be a lot stronger than it is right now. But we'll wait to be seen. And then the last kind of card I want to talk about is Pandasin. Another card that's very good but it's going to take some time to really be very good so when everyone saw this card at first we're like oh that's a really good effect it's gonna be really it's, it's gonna be great it's gonna be super useful it's almost like a snapcaster mage and magic gathering you know we just replay or invoke runes or spell cards from the graveyard underworld and it is a good card but it doesn't see a ton of play right now it's very slow uh we don't have great targets for it like what do we have? We have Ambrosia, Earthquake, Eruption, Nectar Gods, Thunderstorm, Tornadoes. Like, Ambrosia is probably the most targeted card of Pendison. And what you're doing is you're using your normal cast return. You're spending a card to, or spending a spirit to play Ambrosia, and you're getting back effectively one spirit because you just spent two to get three back. And you're summoned for turn. That's very slow and clunky. But sometimes you can loop it, you know, if you play Panda, your opponent's bricked, you enchant it again on your next turn, disenchant with his ability, get Ambrosia, you can loop that and heal back very slowly over time. I've had that happen to me in one very slow game, very control game, where I just bricked a bunch of cards. 
it's okay there. And, you know, you can find removal cards. The best part of Pandasin is that you're reusing cards you've already used. Maybe you have a burn deck with Eruption. I have Nectar Gods and Eruptions as maybes. Like, I have been hit by the Eruption, Eruption, Panda, Eruption before. And just taking a ton of damage on turn one. But then they have no card in play on the field because their Lestrals in the Underworld from Disenchanting for its effect. They use two Eruptions. They have two cards in hand. Maybe those two cards are useless. Maybe... You know, if you have like a mid range burn deck, you just pop in a couple pandas for the utility for earthquakes or eruptions that you've reused. But the only deck that Panda's seeing a ton of play in right now is Fruit because you want to use Ambrosia, you want to use Apple, and you want to get them back to reuse Lotagon and Jatai's triggered abilities. So you use Pandasin and Fruit right now. But in the future, if we get more invoke runes, more strategies that require specific invoke runes, it'll get better and it'll be seeing a lot more play in that sense. If we get you know, cards in the Humbus deck that give us, you know, maybe cards that let us mill our opponents more. So we play, I don't know, one cost and mill five cards from our opponent with the Humbus to play. Then we play Panda, Disenchant Panda right away and do it again and mill our opponents like 14. That's an option. That could be something that happens in the future. So Panda Sense, it's got potential, but it's going to take a little bit of time to really get there. So those are kind of the cards that I've think are being kind of slept on or they need to be slept on because they're not good enough yet but in the future they have so much potential just think about it just think of what crazy like combos nexus thing could you know do with circles of the sky what could humbus get up to if we get some more mill support and that mill support is maybe runes maybe we get a stadium that just mills people for two every turn and now all of a sudden humbus triggers and that triggers and it adds up but we're not there yet Thunderstorm, you know, great tempo. Searching cards is always good. A lot of tutors in Magic the Gathering and stuff like that get you know, just like a lot of draw power in Yu-Gi-Oh! They just kind of get either banned or restricted because it's really strong to just have a card that says, hey, I'm going to go get that card that I specifically need for my deck right now. And the Jolton and Elchick cost for that being a 4 one on one is not a big cost because they're still a decent sized body that probably don't get destroyed right away. But they still might get destroyed right away, but you replace them regardless. And with the card that you might need. So, yeah, those are my cards that I think you're going to have to sleep on until they get good. But I wouldn't get rid of them if they end up in your bulk, you know, boxes or binders. Just hold on to them because they'll be good eventually. Unless somehow the formats gets crazy accelerated and even something like searching for a specific card that you need in your combo is too slow. I doubt that's going to happen anytime soon. I think these cards are going to get very good before we get there. So with that, um, those are my thoughts. hope you guys have your own thoughts. Let me know in the comments. And if you're new here, give me a like, subscribe. I appreciate that. I'm just a growing little channel that likes Celestials. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.